Hey guys, this is the video blog on our article, so which is uh, named as Can a data block accommodate rows of distinct tables? So this is an exclusive uh, blog from Oracle. So I'm Kumar, I'm an Oracle database administrator and consultant for a few of the firms across the globe. So uh, in this blog, we are actually trying to understand that a physical storage called a smallest unit of uh, data storage in the database called as data block can a data block accommodate rows of multiple tables in the database is what you know I just wanted to make it clear the reason why I picked up this is I just saw a few of the you know uh, DBAs and also a uh, beginners uh, get a very you know uh, basic question like this which is very very valid and we will have to answer them with a proper uh, use case so that's the reason I have come up with this uh, blog. You can also see uh, the text blog on my website anyway. And uh, this this particular video will explain you the same whatever you find in the blog. And also we are going to do the use case so that we understand with uh, you know uh, some justification in hand whether that's true or not. So uh, to quickly start with you know uh, this exercise. Uh, we would be uh, doing this way. The the plan of the uh, user case user case study is like this. So let us create a table, and the main uh, we would be understanding better if a row of table one and a row of table two are going into as the same block or not. We will be coming to know only when we know the row IDs of each and every uh, row that is being inserted into the tables. But there should be a mechanism where you actually remap the row ID into the block number that is that Oracle has uh, allocated to, right? So there is a package given by Oracle, so don't worry. Uh, we have a package that will convert the row ID into the block ID. Now, having said this, how do we get the row ID of each and every row of the table? We know this, the column, uh, hidden column called row ID is available to each and every table that you create inside the database, right? So the idea is create table one in one of the table spaces and you know uh, insert few of the rows into the table, identify the row IDs of all the rows and then identify the specific or the respective block IDs of all the rows of table one. Now having did this for table one, let us go and create table two on the same table space and then insert few rows inside the table then again go and identify the block id of you know uh, uh, block id of all the rows of table 2 now when we compare these block ids of table 2 if the block ids are same that means that the oracle allows the uh, oracle data block allows the rows of multiple tables if it has got free space in the data block all right and if the block ids are different definitely we have an answer that oracle cannot accommodate rows of distinct tables into a single data block so that's what we are going to do now so that's the reason let me connect to my one of the environment as you see on the screen so i'll have to connect to my database and now let me create if i have a specific table space called users or anything as such format so that i pick up that one for me uh, yeah that one for the exercise so now let me create a table called tab one so this is the table all right so now because if you see specifically i have created this in users table space that's fine now let me insert few data into this table and as you see okay so i am creating some data or some rows you can call so bc and then cd something like this now let me commit and then let me see the content of it so this is the content a simple content in a table that is a simple rows I'm sure that these three rows will not occupy 8 kilobytes of data isn't it because the data block size minimum size is 8 kilobytes definitely these three rows will not occupy three or eight kilobytes of data and uh, that's the reason I believe that there is a lot of free space available in this data block but before that first of all how do we get the row IDs of each and every row in the database we can do this right c1 c2 from tab 1 so if you do this you get the row IDs of each and every row definitely row ID will be definitely different as you see 
the last alphabet is different but how do we convert this row id into the block id there is a package called dbms underscore row id given by oracle so let us use that so now this is how it would be so dbms underscore row id and i said row id convert that into the block number and then c1 c2 from tab 1 now if you see all these three rows are accommodated into the same block number at the moment because they are from the same table and the 8 kilobytes is not yet you know uh, uh, is not yet full so that's the reason it all these three rows still remains in the same block number now let us create table tab 2 so this is a second table but i'm creating in the same table space okay so i'm just copy pasting this so it would be in the same table space but the table name is tab 2 now let me insert data into this tab 2 as well so i will be using the same syntaxes so that i don't need to type and then let us go ahead so yes and again some data okay and then yeah three rows is what i have given so just say select start from tab 2 again we are going to see uh, some three rows of the table all right now if i wanted to find the block id of these three rows of new table the same way right but tab 2 now if you have observed here the block number was triple two eight and here the block number is double two three six now it clearly shows us that when there is a block allocated to a table uh, of in the database the same block cannot be used by a different table in the database even when there is a free space in the block now the question in the article name is answered so what was the question we had can a data block accommodate rows of distinct tables so the answer is no and we have clearly given a very simple exercise to identify whether you know this is yes or no so we got the answer as no so the answer to the article question is yes but i mean uh, answer to the article question we have found it as no but just try to think this way uh, in case if you have billions of tables with only two to three columns in it and only two to three rows in it very small data now do you think that oracle is wasting lots and lots of data because for every table that it is creating for every two rows for each table that it is creating it is allocating eight kilobytes of data and for each and every eight kilobytes of data block you are maximum using because if you are only inserting two rows that to small data you would be normally using you know not more than uh, 2kb or you know not even 2kb i can say that uh, you know uh, 200 bytes that's it so you are almost again wasting per data block at the maximum at the minimum to minimum you are wasting 7 kilobytes and if you have billions of such tables very small tables you would be wasting gigabytes and terabytes of data now this is how we are not going to you know change we don't have control in the software that was developed by oracle but we are trying to analyze what not to be done in the oracle now with this what is that i'm trying to tell is in case if you have an oracle database with the tables you will never find tables with a very small columns and small data in it if you have such tables definitely you will have a lot of data wastage because multiple rows cannot be accommodated in the same data block given by oracle so that's what i wanted to communicate with this blog thank you guys if you like the video please subscribe to our channel it's only one click away you will be notified with very very interesting topics on oracle database administration every time when we release a new blog thank you